one. Here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the We Got Us podcast, episode number sixteen. At the We Got Us podcast, we are committed to providing ideas of innovation, excellence, and commitment to the next generation. Today, we are here with the founder of Worth Hats, Mr. Ben Miller. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks so much for having me on, Gabe. This is this is great. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, Worth Hats is uh, one of my favorite, favorite companies. Uh, as Ben and I are both uh, video conversing in Vancouver today, they're one of my favorite uh, for right now a small business, but like hopefully a global business at some point. Um, yeah, Ben, want to tell us a bit about the inspiration and the ethos behind uh, the hat company? Yeah, well, it's... Um... Uh, yeah, I loved it. It's a, you know, it is a longer story. I, I'll try and do you want, how do you want, do you want the short version, the medium version, or the long version? Let's go with the short version and then version. throughout the conversation, we can <laughs> reference back to it. <laughs> okay, great. Perfect. So yeah, Worth Hats is a legacy brand uh, that I created in honor of my friend Jacob Worth, uh, who lost his life to suicide. And um, Jacob's dream was to create a hat company. And, you know, we've carried on that dream. And the funding and uh, funds from our hats go towards supporting counseling and therapy for mental health. Wow. Okay. Let's, let's, if, if you can, let's, let's, do, let's expand <laughs> that to the medium then. That show was beautiful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, yeah. So in 2014, Jacob was in the early stage of creating a hat company. Hmm. And uh, we were, we were at, off to school together. We were in, um, I was going to school in Copenhagen and he, we talked a lot about his hat company and, in that summer, uh, we didn't know Jacob was struggling. Mm -hmm. Jacob, um, you know, took his life. And, you know, if anyone has experienced that, it's just, uh, you know, an incredibly painful, sad, hard, confusing time. And mm -hmm. there, was only, there was one thing, though, I wasn't confused about. And one thing that I was certain about that I was going to help Jacob fulfill his dream of having his hat company. And so that year, uh, 25 worth hats were made uh, for his closest friends and family. And each hat came with a tag that uh, we're never as alone as we sometimes think we are. And to be a reminder for um, around our own mental health and struggles and to cross the honor Jacob's dream. So 2000, and that was that, that was where Worth Hats was, it was only meant to be a one-off. And um, the story continued in, um, in 2018, or sorry, in 2017, um, uh, another really close friend of mine, who is also a classmate of ours, uh, Philip, who we'd written our thesis together. You know, I, there's no one I'd, I've ever really spent more time with mm -hmm. uh, day in, day out. Uh, Philip Stardust, he, he was living in Vancouver and then he went back to Germany um, and he started to struggle. And we talked openly about it for many months and it seemed like things were getting better, but they weren't. And at one point he closed up, he closed, closed off and, um, and he took his life. And so mm. it was about a month later that I got a message from uh, a friend of all of ours. And I hadn't thought about Worth Hats. Um, and it was, uh, you know, the email came in saying, you know, hey, Ben, um, if you have any more of those Worth Hats left, I'd love to have one as it's a good reminder. Um, and if you don't have any and ever decide to make some again, I'll be first on the list to get one. And it was that message that just stayed with me for, you know, months, um, you know, through kind of the morning process, the mor morning Philip and, and just, you know, thinking about that message and the much larger systemic issue around mental health and the much bigger societal issue. And it was with that in 2018, I put Worth Hats back into the world and with a much bigger message and um, around, you know, having an impact on our mental health, specifically around counseling and therapy. You know, neither Philip or Jacob went and saw, saw a counselor, neither of them went to get help. And so uh, that's our focus of really kind of destigmatizing that and helping pay support those who can't afford, which is another huge barrier. Mm -hmm. And before we get into how the hats directly help fund counseling, I want to take it back a little bit because I think you've told this story many, many, many times now. But one thing I've, I haven't heard and I've been yearning to ask you is, yes, you've talked about how you will leave an impact and continue the legacy for both Jacob and Philip. But during those 
times when you first got the news other than like the opposite end of the spectrum is you as a human being, Ben Miller is a human being close friend to both of them. When you first got those emails and you got, had to make those phone calls and you went to distribute those the first batch of 25, how did you take care of your own mental health when dealing with that? Yeah. You know, I, it's a, it's a good question. I, you know, I think it's those, there are almost two separate times. It's interesting, you know, the, the same outcome, but they were, they were two very almost, there were different experiences. Well, I think for me, the first time of it was, it helped me, me putting my energy into creating this, uh, these 25 hats and, uh, you know, cross allowing Jake to have his dream and crossing that off his bucket list was a healing thing. I think, you know, like it was for me, it was focusing my energy so I could help others, you know, to be able to connect. And through that, I was able to connect with some of Jacob's friends that I had never met. And I was able, I went to Austria. So Jacob's from Austria. I went to his Austria, Austria and gave it to his family and met his sisters. And, and for me, that was those conversations and chatting with them about it was, was very healing for me. Uh, sorry for the interruption. What was no the, worries. if you don't mind sharing, what was the most visceral and just powerful out of those 25 distributions? Yeah. Um, I met, I met his sister Maria in the airport and we did, we didn't have, so I was in the, the Vienna airport and it was like, we didn't, she was heading out and I was getting in and we were, my plane was late. And it was like, she, she was like, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not going to get to meet her. Like, I'm not, this is like, I have her yeah. hat and, and, and we, I got off the plane and I was texting her and she's like, I'm at the gate. And we had about five minutes to like, Yo, is this, is this real life or straight out of a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, yeah, it was, it was, it was great, but that was, yeah. that was the most impactful where it was just five minutes, but like just an intense, you know, if you were to p pack in like a several hour conversation into five minutes, but just from an emotional standpoint and be yeah. able to give her the hat and, yeah. you know, for, to allow motion to, emotion to come throughout both of us and just to have a, you know, a moment where we were just shared in Jacob's love, I think was a, was a really big thing for me. And what I, <clears throat> one I definitely remember. Do you remember specifically anything that um, Jacob's sister said that day? Uh, it, again, it's, it's one of those, you hear it, like, you don't remember what they say, but they just, mm. you remember how they made you feel. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I, she was just, she was just incredibly grateful and honored and just, yeah, she was just very, yeah. very grateful. And, and I was also equally grateful. Yeah, yeah. That's so, that's such a beautiful story. I think um, one of my favorite musical artists, um, I'm going to come out and say it is, uh, I, I love the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> As a 28 year old man, the Jonas Brothers, I've, I've never left my 12 year old fanboy stage, <laughs> especially when they came back. And uh, one, of, one of their newest songs since their return is called Five More Minutes. Nick Jonas details and pens a song about when he first met Priyanka Chopra at the airport and offered to buy her a drink. And all he thought about was, can you give me five more minutes with you? So I think that like the whole time you were saying, yeah, like we, we can pack. We so often think we're in desperate need of more time, but if you just make the most of those five minutes and be mindful in time, then that's still, yeah as being full of the conversation yeah i think it just yeah it made it just more raw you know it was just became a more real conversation sure, yeah. Sure, sure. yeah so you know i think it's very powerful that you get to carry your friend's name around on your on your head at any point you want to carry to carry down that legacy and for me, like we kind of talked about before we hopped on the call, like Kobe Bryant, when he passed away on January 26 was, even though we didn't have that interpersonal relationship, the impact he had on me was similar. I can, at any point I can put on Kobe Bryant's shoes and be like, okay, I'm inspired to be my best self and carry on that legacy now. For, for people who may have also lost someone, but may not have 
visceral legacy projects to put on themselves? How do you suggest that they, or encourage that they keep on and, and carry on their friend's legacy without having to like put on something? Yeah, um, you know, it's like, anytime something like that happens, it's, it's, it's such a process, you know, it, you go through, the healing process is can be a long one and it's so my first thing would you know would be like at the right time you know too i think there's such a timeline there of like not trying to force something that's not there or you know allow the healing to happen the grief to happen and the, the, you know the tears and the crying and the the anger whatever emotion that's there but you know i it's it's it has to be unique to the individual. Like I, you know, I think if there is something that a way of you honoring that you can honor them, it's, 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 it's incredibly powerful and, and, you know, and healing. So it, but it's incredibly unique to the individual. Like I know where for me too, when Philip passed to, I also have a, tattoo I kind of put on my inner arm just which was very when you know when it was a celebration of life I just didn't know what to say like we so everyone everyone got um had a had a balloon and I just you know what do you say like write something on the balloon and let it go and I you know didn't know this was happening and and I just like uh, I just put you know in that moment love is enough I love you man and I let it go and and it just for me it was something that like stuck with me and I just got in, uh, in German on my arm, I just got Libis Gnu, which is loves enough. And for me, that's like something that just keeps uh, reminding me of him. Yeah. Was that something that you guys exchanged to each other or what was the significance between behind love is enough? Or did that just kind of pop up when you, when you were pumped it, to write? Yeah, it just, it just popped up in my mind. Um, you know, it just came from some like a deeper down and, uh, you know, I think it just comes from ultimately, you know, we just want, we want to be loved mm -hmm. and, and, um, and I just wanted to, you know, in that moment, it was just felt like, don't, you know, there's, there's no blame. There's no, just like, I, I just wanted to carry on that love as he, you know, as he went to, mm -hmm. to the next, you yeah. know, to the next world yeah. or whatever you may be. Yeah. To add on to that, I think it's so often, especially as males in society, we in contemporary society or all throughout human history, actually, up until probably like the last couple of years, we don't, we're not really open with our emotions. Right. And I think like, you just never know when the last interaction that you have with someone is unfortunately and i think like it's, it's okay to normalize in the same way that we're like the hats and my mission and your mission are to normalize and talk about mental health openly it's okay to be to tell your friend that you love them every single time as a man before after after you leave for like pre pre and post covid like after you're done having a beer after you're done having a bubble tea whatever the case may be just be like hey i love you because you don't you just don't know yeah no it's 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 true you you know you you don't know and i i think just too with those individual like those people that are you know that you hold close to you just just recognizing if you know it's not like you necessarily well it might be like always always have to you know express and share but it's like they need to know how you feel like mm -hmm. they need to know that and they should know, like if anything was to happen, like I know when I think of my closest friends, like, and they know how I feel, feel about them. Like, you know, so it's like creating that space. If you never said it or shared it really, like letting them know, like, yeah. you know, you, and uh, like, I want you to just know how much you mean to me. And, and that like, I cherish every time we get to hang out or be together, I really cherish and I love you. And, and, and I, you know, um, I always, I always remember the line I don't know why and this is just coming to me now but like i <laughs> said to one of my um one of my best friends jeff who um he support he supported done a lot of things with him and sports worth and mm. i just remember we were uh we were just getting into a deeper conversation and and i'm like i'm like just so you know man like 
you know, if you fail, I fail. Like, and mm-hmm. it was just like this, um, we were just going, you know, in a, he was in a challenging time, you know, in his life and, and, you know, we all have our ups and downs and we never know when they're going to come. And we all, uh, and I just, it was like, it's just him knowing that he has that support, like literally, like if he, if he's not feeling happy and when I, and when I say fail, I mean, just feeling happy and good in his life and feeling supported and loved. Like, so yeah, I don't know if that, I just, that came to me there where. I absolutely love that. And I might need to, to borrow that for my future line of merchandise. Cause that, that seems like a, a branch of what we got us means, right? Like I want to, like one of my definitions is like, I want to see you win. And, yeah. and you, what you said is the inverse of that. Cause like, if you fail, I fail. Like that's just an alternative definite. There's so many definitions to what we got us means, but ultimately it means like a collective responsibility for the global village to succeed. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So shifting gears a bit, I just, I literally just read an article last night about Toronto Star published how the effects that this um, Toronto and um, the Peel region just went back into, into a full lockdown Monday. We're filming this November 24th. And they, just, they were speaking on the effects that this has on high school students. And they reported, the reporter wrote that a statistic found that one in six high school students during this time have thought about self-harm, right? So, and that's alarming to me, but to focus more on the solution as opposed to the problem here, what do you think is the biggest challenge surrounding talking about mental health openly, both for our generation here as millennials and then kids growing up now? Yeah, um, I think, you know, I say this, it's a big part of worth, like, you know, there's a couple of, things I believe in that question but one of the biggest things we can do I think is being proactive about our mental health like I think in the past it's in general we're so reactive to it and you know I always say like with worth and getting a counselor you know find someone that you connect with before you fall down like we're all going to fall down in life we're all going to have our times where you know at some point where we're not going to want to get a bed uh, you know, we're not going to want to face the day we, you know, we can spiral downward and have someone in your corner before that happens, like do the heavy lifting before. And so when it comes to, I know it can be a little harder with, you know, teens and youth. And that's where kind of, again, the goal of worth of like believing and trying to create this, start this work in an early age. Like I, I do believe that even from a young age, everyone should have a counselor or the, whatever you want to call them. You don't have to call them a counselor, but the space to be able to share and talk. A trusted and adult, I think. A trusted adult. Yeah, for sure. But like, um, just a safe space that, but it's like a consistent space, like whether that's once a week, once every month. Mm-hmm. And so, but you know, it's easier said than done. Like that's something that can happen over time. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's, it's, it's really, I think at a young age, where, um, you know, I think one of the questions actually you were, that you, uh, s- s- you sent to me in a way was about like your 16 year old self. And like, I think when we look back, like in our teen years, we can think that's the whole world. We're so caught up, like that's the world. Like this mm-hmm. is it. Like, I can't go, like, I, you know, there's no, I can't go to this party or I, I'm not this graduation. And it's like, that's everything. Yeah. And I would say to my 16 year old self, probably too, I'm like, just have, have faith, trust the process. It's going to be okay. Like, just keep, keep moving. It will be okay. Like life just continues to get better. Like life and it can just continue and will continue to get better. But it's like, I think for so many younger kids, they encapsulate everything into this, like here and now, which is great, but just you know, this is going to build so much resilience in them. Like if they can look at this, like they've gone through this at a young age and they've already dealt with a huge mental health issue at a young age. And for them to go through that and have the resilience and to be able to, you know, talk and share and communicate with people, it's going to set them up even better in life. It does suck. It's hard. There's no denying that. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's no denying that it's hard. Uh, But 
you know, I think just having faith that there's brighter days ahead and, you know, sharing in it with as many people as you can, talking to your friends, talking to people who can be role models, mentors, people have been through their own struggles. So I don't know if that really answered your question, but it was, uh, yeah, that was a two for one, man. You banged out the last one too. So that was beautiful. Uh, um, on the previous episode to this one, I spoke with um, one of the co-founders of Tether. Have you heard of them? No, I haven't heard of them. Mm. So um, they are partners with an organization called Heads Up Guys that are yeah, located yeah. here in Vancouver, uh, the, the mental health arm of UBC. And basically, it's a it's an it's a holistic app for men to talk about issues that are t- typically discussed face to face, like finances, relationships, marriage, mental health. And the, the founder, uh, one of the founders, Addison, has one of the, the one of the questions he poses in the app is describe how you're feeling in just one word today. And I think that's the, that's one of the entry points for boys and men to talk about their feelings. Like so often we are in a space where, you know, we're not used to like, well, I'm, I'm, I was just raised by my mom. So I, to, I was forced to talk about my feelings all the time. Um, but for like, um, let's say traditional, typical, Void upbringing. You're supposed to be like you're supposed to be tough. You get through this, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And but without, them. so to, to kind of get acting at the entry point is just yeah. Mm-hmm. What's just one thing, and then secondly, then yeah. The second day you build on, build on, build on, build on, right? Yeah. No, I I love that. That made me that opened up a few things where um, I I think in general, you know, and I I say this in at our age, at especially in the older age, but where our emotional literacy is so, is just not really developed. And so simply labeling how we feel uh, can have a huge impact on just on our well-being. Once we're able to like, oh, put a name Mm. to this experience that's going on for me. And I actually, two things are that I will, um, I will, a lot of times if you Google emotional wheel, Mm. so if you Google emotional wheel, I'll do it right now because it's easy. Yeah. And it's cool. Emotional, Emotional wheel. wheel. Um, and so right here. Um, actually, let's go to just images. Yeah. Oof. So. Awesome. So emotional wheel. So this is like you can. It's probably can't. See that. <laughs> it didn't work out quite oh, as well. There point. we go. There we go. <laughs> sort of. There yeah. we go. Yeah, we see it now. We see it now. Awesome. There we go. Um, it's it's like I, I was doing this practice for a while where I'd woke up, I'd wake up in the morning and I would like, okay, how do I feel right now? And it's like, again, tough. We don't have the language. It's tough to put a language. Oh, I'm not sure how I feel. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would Google this and I would look at like, Oh, I'd go around it. And I'd be like, Oh, that's how I'm feeling. That's how I'm feeling. And then it'd be able to be like, Oh, it's because of this or it's because mm-hmm. of that. Like it would really, and all of a sudden my anxiety, anxiety would drop a little bit and it would, the moment I was able to label it, the emotion it was a, i was able to kind of better understand it and it was able to not have so much power over me mm. awesome yeah, yeah i think it's so important what a great resource to provide and so an applicable resource to provide um how are you feeling today what's what's the word uh, <laughs> um what's the word today this could let's see we could take um i am feeling feeling a tad yeah so tad stressed in general just lots of things going on yeah uh but like content like actually very like yeah yeah so i know that's more than one word but but, i'm here to hold space man i'm here to hold space (laughs) yeah content and like and grateful like i'd so so stress content grateful yeah those three that i would yeah sweet wow wow i haven't i haven't thought about this yet today either yeah what do we got on your end bring out the emotional wheel (laughs) I try not to because as like I I, uh, I went to journalism school actually and at Ryerson so I love like if anytime I can be a creator instead of having to uh, follow a template I do so yeah sounds good I think like unfulfilled actually today because um as we as we film this like uh, the Queen's Gambit is uh, this is the second most popular show on Netflix right now and. The, they just 
looking at the way that uh, the protagonist in that uh, in that series, Beth Harmon, um, pushes herself to be the best possible chess player in the world due to a place of being also unfulfilled with her um, upbringing as an orphan. I think I see a lot of parallels between my drive and her drive um, by having to be someone because if you're not if you're not someone or something, what do I really have? So like that, we, we kind of veered off, but I think that was- Oh, that's great. Important. That was important. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's, uh, did you, just, did you just process that on the spot? That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I try, man. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that's what, I was actually talking to someone at the smoothie shop about that, at Body Energy Club. Like um, I have her, <laughs> I have her as my background right now. Ah. And um, yeah, someone like the, the lady standing beside me was like, hey, is that, are, are you watching the show right now? I'm like, yep, like really into it. And then I, I think I explained how I, I grew up alone um, in here in Canada as an immigrant. And like, that's why like the, I, was, I was only done the first episode at that point. The first episode kind of detailed her, her upbringing. I was like, yeah, this is really really beautiful i'm trying to like describe the show without spoiling it for anyone <laughs> um because it places value on obsession hard work and dedication mm. surrounding loneliness mm -hmm. without making that person a victim mm. and i don't want people to feel sorry for like beth Harmon or like myself or others who grow up alone because like mm -hmm. it gives us this outstanding skill to be hyper focused because all we want is to be someone mm -hmm. in a world that no one else gave us anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Cool, yeah. sweet. Thanks for sharing that, man. That's really cool. That's uh, yeah, and just some food for thought. Even like yeah, because I think it's it is like can be labeled that is a uh, you know as a victim in a way, mm -hmm. as far as you know. Oh, you, you only grew up you grew up as an orphan or you grew up as with one you know with your mom raising you, or your father only raising you whatever it may be like you know but yeah there's the it's so rare to look at the this you know the other side of that of like yes but it you know it really gave me the drive to be the person i am and yeah. should want to achieve the things i want to achieve yeah yeah i think there's one way you either focus on the solution or you focus on the problem and obviously when i was seven and feeling this it was hard to be like okay this is what the end result's going to be but then uh you know zoom out 20 years later i'm like grateful to use your one of your words today grateful for the experience and yeah. don't yeah. want to experience it again but <laughs> grateful for the experience <laughs> so. yeah 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 and that do not want to live it again but grateful for it yeah for sure for sure yeah yeah um so on that note do you have uh shifting as uh, shifting to our lightning and fun round what is one idea that has kind of shaped you the most as a man and as a leader and just as a human? Yeah. You share yourself if you want. Well, yeah, I like, I couldn't, I wasn't sure like when it was like, what was an idea? Um, but you know, I'd say for, ex, you know, experience too. Like I just, I grew up spending a lot of time in, in the outdoors and I was a bit of a, I don't know. It's a bit of a weird kid in the way where I actually push. <laughs> push we're all weird in ways, but yep. uh, I um, I push myself like to do, like I guess I got connected like deep ecology or like you know spirituality at an early age, and I would go and do like twenty four hour solos in the woods. That sounds pretty rad. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, I did the first one when I was eight years old. Your mom or your mom or your, your parents guardian allowed you to do that at eight? Uh, <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't really know. Like it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't. They, you know, they weren't, <laughs> weren't fully aware. Um, so it'd be like going off. Like it would be, um, you know, with with my cousins. Like we were able to do it. Like not with. I did. I would like be off at their place, and I would go off and just do. Like they think I was just going kind of like camping or hiking like i would i was i'd be safe but i would just not really tell the uh the full tr the full truth what i was doing and and yeah I would just like like do these solos but like kind of and there's like a uh there's a first nations um 
history around it and and because I just was introduced to that at a some of the you know the, the cultural um the cultural kind of important kind of mm-hmm. traditions and uh, and I so I just wanted to undertake it myself so I'd say I do I would do a variety of those at different times and I just I don't know for me it was like this challenge too it was so hard like you know I remember one that I I could actually the first one I did I like couldn't do it and it like I went 12 hours so it was supposed to be 24 hours and 12 hours I I like ran out like ran away crying you know I was uh like I was I just and like ran back to um you know my cousin's place like uh so and then I went back the next year and did it and accomplished it and so so I think when you talk about experiences that shaped me like I I think you know um those like I have a pretty strong determination to to make things happen and and you know it's that those experiences really helped shape me at a young age you know what can be sometimes scary you know I've done like I did a lot of solo experiences at a young age and that shaped me what scares me now sometimes is those experiences with a partner you know like in a relationship like that's like to me I that's where I'm like there's so I'm, much I'm that a little bit please I feel like that's a very important point that I don't want to go unglossed over please yeah like I just um I just think too I've I've done at a young age and through my through my life like so much like to, to like going at things in a solo fashion or like getting through things but it's like when you bring a partner um you know or a relationship and like oh we're it's not about me it's not about you it's about us and how do we like find this new you know we're finding what's in the middle to move forward in and work through and push through and do it together like that's the stuff that I find wow. scary Wow, wow. Um, yeah. So, so how do you, um, navigate said scariness? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I, you know, I fall down a fair bit. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> it's, um, I'm sure you, you also fell down a fair bit when you were eight or nine, when you were doing for sure. Two, right? Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Right. Now it's just a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now it's just with more arguing and no, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's just really kind of, um yeah f- falling down you know a lot more communication a mm. lot more uh, trying to understand and a lot more you know having compassion mm. you know and um you know i think there's always a, a voice in me i'm more, i'm more comfortable in general i think you know s- at times solo and i don't think that's that's not the easy way in li- like that's mm. it's a much harder way to go in life but yeah. that's where it's like there can be comfort but it's like that part of yourself that says like, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. We can do this. You know, you know, we can do this in partnership. We can do this. Uh, so I don't know if that it's making much sense, but I, there's always a part of me that's like, Oh, that can w- want to run away when facing challenges as in a relationship or partnership. And it's like yeah. reminding myself that, um, you know, that you're always, you're always stronger together. You're always stronger together and, mm-hmm. and you're always stronger as a group and, you know, um and we need each other and and you know i've had i've had myself some dark times in the past and it's you know it's because you feel alone it's because you feel isolated you know uh and and being in partnership and being um connected that way is uh a way to not experience it that i think that's super super awesome because both like your self-awareness is off the charts to me just off these last uh i guess 30-ish minutes we've been speaking but also just like the how you had praised how i was able to process uh, the queen's gambit piece so quickly you also process that on the spot as well and i think my my addition to that would be what you described at first was for my for my viewers who understand the world more so through the basketball prism like that isolation piece is the first 10 years of Kobe Bryant's career when he was a super, super young brash kid and wouldn't trust his teammates. He was just number eight. He, I think one of the things that he said was, I, I see that you guys are open, but why would I pass you guys the ball? Well, because you guys haven't worked as hard as me. Yeah. And, but sometimes you just, for the sake of keeping the team, the cohesion of the team, 
you just need to give someone a touch so that they're incentivized to come back to play defense. <laughs> You know, I think that's something that he learned when he became number 24. He, he started thinking about, okay, as a collective, how do, we, how do I raise the, the ability of other people? Because I'm going to get mine because I put in all this work already. And the team was only going to be as successful as mm. third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh best player, as opposed to being like, okay, I'm the second best player behind Shaquille O'Neal. I'm working my butt off so I can be, so there's no denial I am the best player here. And I think that speaks to both the team dynamic, but as well as like uh, interpersonal dynamic as well. You're not working to outdo Shaquille O'Neal. You're working yeah. to enhance each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, okay, I don't, I, I guess I didn't share this with you. I'm a huge basketball fan. And oh, that, sweet. And basketball is my life growing up. And I, 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 when I moved back from Copenhagen, I helped coach my old high school basketball team. And yeah. Um, yeah, we, and we, we won actually a provincial championship in, uh, in yeah. 2016. Yeah. So I, you know, all those metaphors and yeah. speaking basketball and, and kind of seeing the world through that mm. team dynamic is. Which is, school was this, sorry? Walnut Grove, Walnut Grove secondary. So Elton Langley. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, just, just yeah. sharing that. I, I love every time you bring up, um, yeah, kind of the. Kobe, but the basketball, like looking at life through basketball is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that kind of limited my scope um, earlier on was I was like, is uh, I organized uh, Richmond Youth Basketball League up until 2016. And uh, when he retired, I started thinking, I started this new mission of wanting to be like, okay, how can I impact youth in the same way that I've impacted hundreds of kids through basketball? But I, I know there's life outside of this. So how do we how do we impact like a ballerina? How do we impact a future engineer? How do we impact the lady who opens up a Korean restaurant? You know, I think greatness is holistic and not just through putting a ball through. Hundred percent. But to even with your example, you brought it up there of like you know where, um, you know. Kobe and you know moving from number eight 24 but lifting your teammates up and and you know it's like how you know it's about lifting each other up and you making me better me making you better like that's just that's just life that's just any team that's just you know that's you know that's just you know that can resonate with everyone and you know in in every group so but it's using that I just it was using basketball but whether you're a chef in the kitchen whether you're a ballerina, whether, you know, you work, uh, in an office, um, it resonates with all mm -hmm. teamwork is teamwork, right? It's just about, uh, it's kind of getting the discipline. Yeah. Okay. Last, last one for you, sir. You had already answered the 16 year old version of yourself question. So I'm going to alter a little bit. <laughs> if you were sitting across from, or across from the screen from, any high school student now, as opposed to 16 year old version of yourself saying, insert random lottery picked 16 year old high school student right now. What would you, what would you say to this person? I would say, um, life will continue to get better. So don't like, it's gonna enjoy, enjoy this, whatever this may be, but trust that life can is so can be so incredible like obviously there's all the things there's gonna be so hard but it's like mm -hmm. you know look forward to what's ahead uh and don't get too caught up in the present as far as mm -hmm. um as far as like letting it weigh on you so much so there's so much beauty ahead and just be excited for that wow 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 it's beautiful it's beautiful and um i actually like to take myself through this exercise as well so uh, so i'm going through uh, i'm learning every episode and what I would tell myself is, or a younger version of myself this week, is do what you do, but do it for everyone's well-being and knowledge, as opposed to doing it for the clout or the subscribers. Because there was a day where I caught myself earlier this week, where I woke up and I randomly just lost, like, this is not healthy, by the way, for every kid watching this. I was like, well, what, what did I do to just lose six followers in a day? Like that's the biggest, that's the biggest decrease in a single day since like I've gotten to a certain echelon. But then I thought about it and I was like, okay, hey, actually, if I continue to put out 
the content and I continue to educate myself, and educate others, so I can best educate others. That number doesn't matter as long as I continue to do the work every single day and I wanna be judged by the whole painting as opposed to just a single stroke of whatever I said that day. Yeah. So that's what I was doing. Well, that's awesome, man. And it's, yeah. and it's true. It, it, you know, I, but I think too, we have to like, some, these things will always come back to us, right? To yeah. where we're like, you know, and it's like, <laughs> it's like taking breath, gathering yourself and remembering, reminding and, and you know, cause constantly we're, you know, little things, little things like that can yeah. disrupt us, you know, and that's yeah. just life. Like it will always have these little disruptions, but it's yeah. just remembering the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Anything else you'd like to add that you'd like us to know about the hats or just about Ben Miller, the human being as in general? <laughs> um, yeah, just with uh, worth, like I think it's these next actually few weeks are incredibly exciting time. We're launching our new website uh, in the coming week, which we're Ooh. super excited about. Uh, What's we're giving, you? we're giving uh, just like the the layout, the the ease for people to kind of read the worst story. Just kind mm. of, yeah, it's just really, um, just really clean, and and also to, you know releasing a few things where we had we never put our mission and vision like we just hadn't had on our website and so that's mm -hmm. there you know our culture page and so people can just really see what we're up to and we're also mm -hmm. launching our one for one so every hat mm -hmm. you have an option to um you know you can buy the hat all all hat pro like proceeds go towards supporting counseling and therapy but you can directly do it that one hat will pay for one counseling session. So, wow. you know, in, in that you, you know, you buy a hat, you pay for a counseling session, you get an amazing hat, yeah. uh, you support the ongoing work of worth. And we say to finish it off, when it delivers it, when it comes to your door, you get an amazing hug for your head. So, yeah, yeah. so that's a, yeah. a lot in one. <laughs> I'm getting paid zero dollars for this advertisement, but like, I guess I seriously suggest getting one of these hats because like the, the attention to detail on, like each little piece feels different than any other hat I've ever had in my life. And I think like, I really hope that Jacob is proud of what, how you've carried on this legacy. It's very different than like a uh, Los Angeles Dodgers hat I could buy at the new era store. It's, yeah. Like this, this back here, this, this athletic, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's just, yeah. The fly yeah, ball. Details, details are off the charts. Thanks, man. There's a lot of love that goes into every hat. That's for sure. And they're all, you know, they're really high quality hats that are made, um, you know, here in Vancouver. So amazing, amazing. And I'm looking forward to uh, Ben graciously offered that that I uh, model the, their new line of hats tomorrow. So I'm super, super excited to meet Ben in person tomorrow, safely for everyone who's <laughs> <Very> safely. <laughs> yeah, it will be sure. safely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. No, excited, Gabe. And uh, thanks so much for having me on. This was great. Love chatting with you and, and really inspiring. And so keep it up. It's super cool. You too. I'm just going to. Thanks for your time, Ben, and um...